So good morning, afternoon, everyone. My name is Sofia Galvan, and I'm going to present one of the work, works of my PhD, which is currently in progress, and um, which title is Future Fossils, Application of Fossil Record Bias on Current Biodiversity Information. This work is based on the idea that, as you may already know, the fossil record uh, presents several bias, both related with the preservation and the sampling processes. In this work, we are going to focus in three bias sources. The first one is the geological bias sources, because uh, fossil, fossilization process mainly take, take place in, in sedimentary environments. The second one would be the bi biological bias, because the species traits can facilitate or hinder fossilization. And the third one being the anthropogenic bias sources, because human history can also influence the, the fossil recovery. So we ask ourselves, we thought ourselves, sorry, that as just a fraction of past biotic information is accessible today, future paleontologists will retrieve as well a bias sample of, of current biodiversity. And we ask if good known patterns be detected in the future. To prove so, we are going to use current richness maps for uh, mammals, mammals, amphibians, and birds. And we are going to filter this data with, with a, a, um, um, a series of, of filters simulating, simulating bias sources. The first filter we are going to apply is the uh, geological uh, simulating bias for what we are going to use uh, an unconsolidated sediment map because as I have told you, um, uh, fossilization mainly takes place in sedimentary environments. Then once we have this filtered data, we are going to apply a second bias, uh, a, a second simulated bias, in this case, a biological one, um, focusing on the, on, the, uh, on the run size and the body size of the species that is bigger and wider distributed animals present, presenting a higher probability of being sampled or recovered as fossils. Once we have this sample species, we are going to test the impact of the bias that we have simulated into first uh, the main biomes or climatic zones being the green, the tropical one, the red, the arid one, the pink, the temperate one, the purple, the cold one, and the blue, the, the polar one, as well on a very well-known uh, macroecological pattern, which is this pattern. Well, this pattern, is the, what is called the latitudinal diversity or bio, biodiversity gradient, by which the number of species decrease, uh, the number of species and also higher taxa decrease from the Ecuador to the pole, giving this kind of, of plot in the right hand side uh, when we plot latitude versus richness. This is considered as one of the most pervasive ecological patterns, so that's the reason why we decided to focus on that. Okay, so as preliminary results, if we focus just on the first filter, the, the, the geological one, the unconsolidated sediment filter, and we retain just the information here in this big map that falls inside these sedimentary environments, we can see that climatically, tropical and temperate climatic zones are the most affected by this filter, losing around 75 and 73% of their area. On contrast, cold climatic zone is the less affected, just losing 75% of their area. Uh, as a tropical climatic zone is the most affected and there are higher number of species in here, we thought, will more species be lost in this area? Let's see. Well, if we focus on a species level with this fair filter, we can see that for mammals and birds, more or less 50% of the species signal is lost, whereas for amphibian is a higher number, is a 72% more or less. However, if we want to focus on the climatic zones as we have done before, the same pattern is repeated for the three animals group. So despite tropical and temperate uh, climatic zones suffering a greater loss of area, as we have seen in the previous slide, the polar climatic zone is the one suffering from a greater loss of a species signal indeed followed by temperate and tropical. And what about the latitudinal diversity or biodiversity gradient? So to do these plots, what we did was extract richness values per pixel or, or per cell, and plot, sorry, again, latitude. For 
the original richness maps in the first column, the unconsolidated sediments filtered data in the second column, so applying the geological uh, bias um, simulation, and uh, sampling 50% of the species uh, based on the runs or their on their run size in the third column and uh, on their body size in the in the last column. Um, that is that that is giving to wider distributed and bigger animals a higher probability of being sampled. As you can see, uh, for all the animal groups, for mammals, birds, and amphibians, the latitudinal diversity gradient is um, maintained through all the filters, although losing their steepness through time. So what were the main findings for this uh, work so far? Well, we have found that tropical and temperate climatic zones are the proportionally least preserved, and the amphibians group is the one losing a highest percentage of a species signal. However, there we didn't found we didn't find a relationship between the loss of cl uh, climatic of the area of a climatic zone and the loss of their species signal. As well, what is very interesting is that we found that the latitudinal diversity gradient is generally maintained throughout the filters based on both geological and biological bias. And this is important to give hope to previous attempts to recover this latitudinal diversity gradient in deep time, as well as for the future of the detection of these macro patterns. As future steps, we would like to investigate new filters related to the last uh, fossil record um, bias sources that I have uh, presented to you, that is the anthropogenic one. In this case, just maintaining the data, for example, that we know, the, the sites, sorry, that we know that, that have uh, fossil um, information. We also want to incorporate different preservation rates because so far we are just uh, uh, extracting 50% uh, of the species, but we also want to, to play with less, with 70, uh, sorry, 25 and with more, 75% in order to compare when we change, when we change these preservation rates. And as well, uh, we want to continue measuring the latitudinal diversity gradient, in this case, in a more quantitative way, not just plotting the data and see if the pattern is maintained, but also measuring, for example, the slope between the latitudes and the richness values for each of the cases. And that was all so far. Thank you all for your attention. I also want to thank all my colleagues for the never ending help and all the funding sources that allow me to carry this work. I'm not more than willing to answer any question here or in the Discord channel. Thank you again.